Hi everybody, this is Rob Windsor from Pay Group, and in this session we'll take a look at how to get started with Power Automate. Power Automate, which was formerly known as Microsoft Flow, is a cloud-based service that enables you to create automated workflows. Power Automate is part of the Power Platform. To build workflows, or as they're known in Power Automate, flows, you connect to cloud-based services from Microsoft and other vendors. You connect to these services using connectors, of which there are more than 200 available. Each connector implements a set of triggers and actions, topics which we'll discuss further throughout this session. There are both standard and premium connectors. If you use a premium connector, then the user authoring the flow and the users consuming the flow may need to have premium Power Automate licenses. As I mentioned, each connector implements a set of triggers and actions. You use these when building your flows. Each flow is a single trigger. That's what starts the flow process running. And then one or more actions, these implement the logic or functionality in the flow. Not all triggers and actions connect to a service. However, for those that do, you need to indicate the set of credentials you use to authenticate with that service. By default, the credentials of the flow author are used, but you can choose to use a different set of credentials if they're available to you. Many organizations create service accounts specifically to use for connections in their Power Automate flows. Now let's move to a demo where we'll build a simple approval flow to demonstrate the use of connectors, triggers, actions, connections, and much more. The approval process we'll be building will be for this SharePoint list in one of my developer tenants. It's a pretty simple list. If I click New, you can see that each item has a title. We'll set that to item one. It has an amount. It has an amount. We'll use this um, in determining who needs to approve during our approval process. I'll click Save here. You'll see there's also an approval status field, which defaults to pending and an approval summary. We'll use these fields to record information about the approval. And then the user who created the item, the user who modif last modified the item, and the dates and times for those actions. All right, now the actors involved here, uh, so Rob, me, and my tenant, um, I'll be the flow author. There's also uh, Megan. Megan will be the person who will be updating the approval demo list. Then there will be Adele and Alex, and they will be the approvers. So I mentioned that Rob is the flow author. So we'll come over to Rob's uh, instance of uh, Chrome here. And then we'll create a new tab, and we'll go to the flow website. So that's uh, flow.microsoft.com. I'm already signed in. Uh, when you first sign into flow, it'll ask you uh, what's your location. I live in Canada. So you can see that it actually redirects to canada.flow.microsoft.com. And we want to create a new flow. Now, there are several ways to do this, but um, the most obvious will be to click the Create button over here in the left-hand navigation. And there are different sort of categories of triggers. Um, so, for example, there's the instant flow or manually triggered flow or a scheduled flow, um, so one that's going to run on a timer. Uh, but we're going to create an automated flow. So it's triggered by a designated event. And in this case, that designated event will be when an item gets added into the SharePoint list. So we'll give our flow a name. It will be uh, Approval Demo. And then we need to select the flow's trigger. 
So um, this will be from the SharePoint connector. So to filter here, I'll type in um, SharePoint. And then we want when an item is created. So I'll click on that and then I'll click create and then that will create my flow. So the trigger has been added to the flow. Each item, the first item in any flow is the trigger. So this is what makes the flow happen. In this case, the flow is going to run when an item is created in the approval demo list. So I need to say what site collection or what site does the list live in? So it's this one here. And then what's the name of the list? And the name of the list is approval demo. Um, and once we have our trigger, we need to add at least one action before we can save. So we add an action by clicking on new step here. And just for testing purposes, I like to use the compose action. So I'll just type in compose. And there is the compose um, action. And our input will be information that comes from the trigger. So when an item is created, well, let's just show the title. So I'll come over here from my dynamic content and I'll pick title. And then that will get added into here, here to my compose um, action. And at this point I can go ahead and save. So I'll click the save button. And you can see it says it's saving and now it's saved. Um, and now we can go, go and actually run this. Now I just saved and I get this warning so Flow sometimes knows, oh, you just saved. I don't need to put up this warning. Sometimes it doesn't quite know that. So even though I know I just saved, it's still giving me the warning. It's okay to go ahead and navigate away from the Flow designer. Um, so now I can come over here and add another item. And in this case, let's do it as Megan because Megan will be the person uh, doing this under most cases. So I'll click New here. And we'll add in item 2. And again, we'll set the dollar amount to 100 and click Save. And now we'll come back over here to uh, the main page for our flow. And we can get to this by going to My Flows and then clicking on uh, the flow that we just created. And down here, it'll indicate when the flow runs. So this doesn't happen instantaneously. Uh, basically, Flow will be notified that the event we're looking for happened, which is an item got added to the list, and then our Flow will run. So it could take a little bit of a delay before that happens. There you can see it just did happen. It succeeded, and I can actually click on this to see the, the Flow run information. So there was the item was created, and then down below in the output, you can see all the information. So like what was the list item ID? What was the title of the item? What was the amount value? Um, sometimes you'll see JSON data showing here. And um, also in our compose, I asked it to give me the title. So we should see the title, which is item two. So after, you've, after a flow has run, you can go in and click on it in the run history to see the details of that flow. Now that we know our trigger is working, let's update the flow to kick off the approval process. So I'll come over to the top right here and I'll click edit to go back into edit mode for the flow. And um, I'm gonna add in a new step. So this is adding in a new action. And in this case, the action I'm gonna add is called a scope. Uh, a scope doesn't actually do anything, it's a container. So we'll add in the scope and we'll set the name of the scope. So I'll write, I'll click on the uh, ellipsis here and then click rename. So this is how you get to the menu for the action or the trigger. Um, and we'll call this main. And this is a pattern I like to use to have a scope that contains um, all of the sort of logic for my flow. Um, it just enables, it just makes the designer cleaner and easier to navigate. Um, so I'll take my compose, actually I'll leave my compose there for now. And then to add an action inside of the container, I'll click the add an action button here. And we want something from the approvals connector. So I'll click on approval and there's the approvals connector. 
And then these are the actions that are available inside of the approvals connector. So you can start an approval and then have other actions in between the starting of the approval and waiting for the approval response. Um, or you can combine those two things into one, which is start and just sit there and wait for the approval to complete. So we'll, we'll do that one. So I'll click on start and wait for an approval. So what's the approval type? So do we want everyone to approve or reject or just the first person who responds? Um, you can even have custom responses. That's a little bit out of the scope of, of this talk. So we'll just go ahead and click um, everyone must approve. And then once we do that, the rest of the options will show to us. So these are the options. For example, the title will be the title of the email um, that gets sent to the person who's going to be asked to approve or the title they see um, in the approvals portal, which I'll also show you. Um, so I'll just call this, or I'll just set the title to item review. And in this case, we always want Adele to be one of the reviewers. So I'll just choose Adele here using the people picker. Um, the details, these will be the body of the email. We're just going to do something really simple saying, um, please uh, review uh, the item linked below. And then we want to say, what is the link to the item? And we can actually get that from the dynamic content for the trigger. So it is linked to item. And then what should be the text for that link? What will the user see to be able to click on? And we'll set that to the title value or title field value um, for the item. So there's title right there. All right. Um, so that will actually start the approval process. And then we'll take our compose action and we'll just drag and drop it down below there. And um, let's grab some of the dynamic content. So instead of showing the title of the item that was selected for approval. Now let's go ahead and do some of the dynamic content that comes from the approval action. So there you can see start and wait for an approval, uh, wait for approval. And one of the values you can get back from that action is the response summary. So a summary of the response or response is coming from the approver or approvers. So we'll go ahead and set that. Okay. So when the item is created, we'll kick off the approval process. And all we'll do is just see what responses we got back. We're not going to do any kind of other logic right now. So I'll click Save to save those changes. And now I'll come back over. Actually, let's um, navigate to the main page for the flow here. And then we'll come back over to uh, Megan. And we'll add a new item. So item uh, 3. And a dollar value of 100 and click Save. All right, and now I'll come over to Adele and I'll go um, look at or monitor Adele's email. And there's the email that Adele gets to request for her to um, review the item. Now, this didn't happen instantaneously. I've cut out the time it took, the delay it took for that email to show up, which was about a minute um, from the video. But here you can see there is an email for Microsoft Flow approvals. Um, it indicates when the item was created. There's the link to the item, which Adele can click to go ahead and review the item details. Um, and then Adele can approve or reject. Now, there is one interesting thing to note here. It says that the approval was requested by Rob Windsor, but it was actually Megan was the, was the user who created the item within the SharePoint list. And the reason why it's saying Rob Windsor is because that's the author of the flow. So the connection to the to approvals was done by Rob Windsor. Um, so we'll see a couple different ways to handle that. Some of them are specific to different actions. Some of them are handled through connections, which we talked a little bit about in the slides. Now, if I come over to, the, to flow, um, and we just go, let's just go to home here. 
And then if we expand under action items and approvals, there we can also see that item review. Um, so there's the information about that specific item that was being requested to, re to be reviewed. And if Adele has the Flow app on her mobile device, Adele could also get a notification there that there's an approval waiting and actually do the approval um, there as well. So there are several different places where you can do the approval, either directly in email, through the Flow portal, through the Flow mobile app. So in this case, let's just go ahead and approve and let's add some comments in and then click Submit. Okay, so once we submit, the email will change to indicate that I've already done the approval. I don't need to do that again. So that way, you know, if you go, if you have 10 emails and, oh, geez, there was a couple approvals in there, but I can't remember which ones I did, um, the email actually changes, which is quite nice to indicate that you've, you've done that. Um, so now let's come back over to uh, Flow. This is under Rob and refresh. And we should see that the flow just ran. It took almost three minutes. And we expand our container, our scope, and then our compose here. And then there's the approval summary. So the approver was Adele Vance. There's Adele's email, uh, Adele approved. And then there is the date and time. Now we did have that one issue which I identified which was that in the email to Adele, it said the requester was Rob Windsor uh, rather than uh, Megan Bowen. So let's fix that. So again, I'll go into edit mode here for our, our flow. And I'll go to our approval action, or sorry, our, our start and wait for approval action. And then I'll expand the advanced options. And one of them here is the requester. So um, we can explicitly say who the requester was. Now, the requester is the person who created the item within SharePoint. So I'll click these little arrows here so we can actually go and use the dy dynamic content. And then from the information in the trigger, I want to say, what's the created by email? So the requester is the person who created the item within SharePoint. So now with that change made, I can go ahead and click Save. And I could go create another item to test my work, um, or I can run a test based on a previous run. So up here in the top right, there's a little test button. I'll click on that, and I'll say I want to use the data from a previous run. And then this is the most recent run, so I'll check that, and then I'll click test. And now what it's going to do is redo my workflow with the changes made um, using the same data used in that run. So that's the same SharePoint item. So again, I'll come back over here to Adele's email. And now we can see we have the new email that was just generated. But this time, it indicates that the approval was requested by Megan Bowen um, and that the approval connection used is Rob Windsor. Okay? So in this case, instead of changing the connection... Uh, which, again, I referred to in the slides, we change the property within the action. Okay, and again, Megan, let, let's time, let, let's, sorry, this time let's reject just to see the results here. Okay, so and then come back to here, and we can see that this is monitoring the run history, and we can see that this time um, Adele rejected. All right, we have just about 10 minutes left, so let's make a few more changes here. I'll go back into edit mode for our flow, and I'm gonna create a couple of variables. Now, variables can't be created inside the scope, so we'll go ahead and add them in here between the trigger and the scope by clicking the little plus button here, and I'll click add an action. And we wanna use the variables connector, or the variable connector, and I want to initialize a variable. So we'll set uh, this to, or the name of this variable to approvers. And this will be a string. And we'll set the default value to Adele's email because we want, always want Adele 
to be an approver. And I'll just change the name here. So I'll say I'm initializing the uh, approvers variable. And then I'll create a second variable using the exact same steps. This variable is called approval result. It's also of type string and its default value is approved. Now let's update our approval process. So if the dollar amount here uh, for the item is greater than a thousand, we want to add a second approver. So let's expand our main scope. And I want, really want to add this at the top, but the designer doesn't allow you to do that. So I'll have to add this condition to check to see if the dollar amount is greater than zero, sorry, greater than a thousand um, between the, these two actions. So I'll say here, add an action. And um, it's actually in the control uh, connector. It's condition right here. Um, so our condition is um, if amount is greater than um, $1,000. Right. So the value we're checking is the amount that comes from the trigger. I can actually just uh, type in the filter here to get that. And is the amount greater than 1,000? And if it is, then I want to update the approvers variable, or I want to append, basically, um, Alex Wilbur's email to that variable. So over here in the yes container, I'll click add an action and it will be in the variables connector. And I want to append to a string variable. Uh, and that string variable will be the approvers variable. I want to append Alex Wilbur's email address. Okay, so I'll just change the name here to um, Whoops, add second uh, approver to the approvers variable. Okay. Um, so now uh, we can go ahead and close the condition and we do need to move it. So now that we have it, we can go ahead and drag and drop the start and wait for approval in between these two actions, so our, our condition is first. And now we need to go modify the start and wait for approval action um, to, instead of having the approver hard-coded to Adele Vance, that we will instead use the value stored in our approver's variable to say who the approval is assigned to. All right, so that's the approver's variable. We also have the approval result variable. So this is defaulted to approved, but after the approval process is complete, we want to check to see if any of the if any of the approvers rejected, and if they did, we want to change the approval result to rejected. So this action has a property which is an array or a collection of the responses. So to check all of the approvals, we have to loop over or iterate over that array. So I'll add an action. It's in the control uh, connector. It's called apply to each. So here we'll just rename this apply to each uh, approval response. And then the value we're looping over is the responses. That's the array. And then inside here we want a condition. So I'll add a condition. And this is if the response was reject. So the value I'm checking, again, comes from the start and await for approval. And uh, the naming here is a little bit weird, but so that's the collection. And then here's the individual values in the collection. So it's responses, approver, response. So that's an individual response out of the collection. 
And if its value was reject, that means that the approver rejected. And now we want to change the value of the approver result variable to be rejected. So um, that's in the variables connector, and it is set variable. And we want to set the approval result to rejected. Um, and I could rename this, but I'm not going to just for time reasons. Here we're getting a little bit short on time. All right. Um, so the last thing we want to do now that we have all that is to actually update the list item. So we want to update the approval status and the approval summary uh, with the appropriate values. So down here at the bottom, and actually we can go ahead and delete this compose. We don't need it anymore. Uh, we can add an action. And this is from the SharePoint connector because we're updating a value in SharePoint. Uh, so we want to update an item. Update item. Okay, so what site does the list where the item lives? Uh, what's it? What's the name of the site or the URL? So it's that one there, and the list is approval demo, and the ID uh, is the same ID of the item that was um, from the trigger. Okay, so that's the list item ID that uniquely identifies that item, and we have a couple of uh, required fields, so you have to set those even though you're not changing them. Um, so we need to set the uh, title, and we need to set the amount. But we want to change is the approval status. Okay, so we want to change it from pending to the value of the re approval result. So that'll either be approved or rejected. And then for the approval summary, we can get that from the start and wait for approval action or at least the data coming back from that action. And that is the approval summary. And again, I could change the name, and I really should change the name of this action, but again, just for time constraints, I'm not going to. Um, so let's go ahead and save. Okay. And then I'll come over to Megan, and we'll create a new item. And this will be item four. And this time, I'll set the amount to 1,500, which is greater than um, 1,000. So now we should have two approvers, one being Adele and one being Alex. So I'll sit here and wait and monitor Adele's email. So there's the email to Adele to approve. And um, she'll go ahead and approve. And then over here under Alex, there's the email to Alex. And Alex will approve. And then we can come back over here to the list. And in a moment, we should see the approval status and the approval summary change for the item whose title is item four. And there you can see those values have changed. The status is approved. And there is our approval summary. Now, a couple of quick things in the last minute I have available. Note that the modified by is Rob Windsor. Okay, so come back, coming back over to the flow, let me go back into edit mode. Uh, I did make one mistake, which I've corrected through the magic of video editing. Uh, I chose the wrong property here. It should have been response summary from the start and wait for approval action. But the reason why the modified by is Rob Windsor is because this um, action, the connection for that is the Rob Windsor credentials. So even though the user who created the item was Megan and the users who approved the item were Adele and Alex, this action in the flow runs using the credentials of Rob Windsor, who was the author, um, thus, when the update happens to SharePoint, it happens using those credentials, and that's why the modified by shows as Rob Windsor. So that completes both the demo and the session. In the demo, we saw all the major components of a Power Automate flow. We saw triggers, actions, conditions, loops, and variables. 
And we also saw how to use the approvals connector. The demo combined with the information in the slides should be enough to get you started building flows yourself. So thank you very much, and I hope you've enjoyed this session. Thank you for being a part of the Galactic Collaboration Summit. Join the community and meet in-person world-class Microsoft and MVP speakers this autumn in Wiesbaden, in Frankfurt, Germany, with 15 full-day tutorials and over 150 Microsoft 365 and Azure sessions at the combined European Collaboration Summit and European Cloud Summit from 26 to 28 October 2020. Community rocks.